Yeah. The rewards of self-belief have turned me into an addict. Yeah. Girls cheating, being hoes has turned me into a what savage. Before I guys, Aga Boca here with another video for you today. And today we're going to be playing some more Dream Daddy. Now, last time we left off uh, when we were leaving the house so uh, my daughter could, you know, have uh, her friends over. And yeah, let's get right into the video. Fuck, this song is so fucking groovy, dude. <clears throat> wow, I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone. So I'm just gonna pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go this way. Cool, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance, could it be? <sighs> a big burned out neon sign hungs above a tiny dive bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? Alright. It'll do. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls sounds in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. Bartender slides me a nice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. I awkward turned my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team. Hoping I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in the bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike. Although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. Alright. Hey. Oh, okay. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass slides up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Okay, you seem like you're drunk as fuck. <laughs> hey, sailor. Oh, hello. You get to see fresh me in here. Hi, Mary. Come here often? Oh, no. I actually just moved to this part of town, to, uh, uh, to this part of town today. I'm Ego, by the way. Hmm. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If, <laughs> if they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Hey. Oh, I love that team. I also love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. What the fuck? I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. A little. Um. Ah. And buy a gal a drink? Uh, nah. Maybe some other time? Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points, a little too close than the way I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I fear I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team. He sits alone, brooding over a beer and keeping an eye on the game. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I'd say my team is superior. That's where you're wrong, since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple through the, uh, throughout the bar. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us based on the mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender who pours two, whis uh, two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Thanks, amigo. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yeah. Robert chuckles. <laughs> She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. The best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs this place? No. no. That'll be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Hey. <laughs> He's just like, hey. hey. Good guy, Neil. Not, uh, not enough Neils in this world. Oh. Okay. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. 
You like shots? Uh, I like shots. Ooh, shots fired. I don't like them. <laughs> I like shots. I don't love them, but I like them. Thank you. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one of them to me. Here's one to your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but my, I try my hardest to look tough. Wait, I think that's... Uh, wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, you go. This uh, guy's out of my friend league. But I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Yeah, I actually like the hand tattoo that he has. I like his rugged good looks. And I like the leather jacket. But I'm going to say uh, uh, a tattoo is like a conversation starter. I like your tattoo. What does it mean? It's a reminder. Oh, shit. I picked the wrong one. I wait for him to elaborate, but it seems like he's done talking. Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? I'm on the other kicking me out of the house, trying to run from a problem, trying to make friends. I'm trying to make friends. I'm new in town. Figured I might be good to put myself out there. You seem pretty cool. The key to being cool is acting like you don't care about anything, but actually care very deeply about everything to the point where it's deb debilitating. God damn. Really? Hey. Robert downs the rest of his drink. Of course not. He gets up. I... Be right back. Got powder in my nose. Pardon? Never seen Robert make, uh, never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> I guess so. I gotta admit, that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? For sure. Robert and I leave the bar and I find ourselves walking in the same direction. Yeah. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Ligo. So, are we doing this or what? What? You know, do you want to come inside or not? I'm sorry, what? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. I lay it on smooth, smile and nod. No, thank you. I lay it on smooth. Ah, oh, man. I must say no thank you for now, man. Uh, I'd better call it a night. Catch you around? Mm. Sure. I head home. Head buzzing with whiskey. What do you mean? Are we going to do this or not? I plop down on the couch and I'm asleep before I even get the chance to take my shoes off. I wake up uh, f to a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine. Early birds still want to work out? This is Craig, by the way. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m.? Who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing, I drift back to sleep. Whoops, must have winked back out. I check my phone again. Hey, bud, still want to get your swole on? I'm ready to get. Uh, I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out. But it is Craig. I do want to catch up. Nah, bro, we got. Let's go to the gym. Let's go to the gym. Hey, my man, I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few uh, seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing. Meet me at the gym. I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. I throw my blanket off and. Hey, wait, I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth to throw on the only clothes that I own that are even kind of gym appropriate and head out. The neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the morning. Birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out front, stretching, of course. He spots me and waves enthusiastically. Hey, bro. Good morning. Hey, good to see you, man. I'm definitely not as pumped as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. You ready to kick some butt? Help. <laughs> Just a help. Gotta stay posse, dude. With your help, I am. Yeah. I get the feeling that this is going to be less of me kicking my butt and more the gym kicking my butt. But I can handle it with you here. Dude, bro, that means a lot. Well, yeah, I mean, look at you, bro. You fucking got swole. Dude. We head into the gym, and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half. 
And it seems like Craig is friends with all of them. Oh. Hey, he high fives and finger guns all of the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money and spend it on protein shakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, bud. Let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be. Walking. So, I know we're on treadmills. Mm. Yes. And those over there are ellipticals. Oh. Very good. What is all this other stuff? <laughs> Craig laughs. They might look a little scary, but I guarantee all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. I've watched as a dude in the muscle teeth flexes a muscle I don't even know existed on a machine that I think was once used for process. <laughs> I think was once used to process grain into flour. <laughs> what is that? Why is that guy doing that to himself? That's a good question, bro. Why do you th what do you think he's doing? Training to crush people's skulls with his size? Using a medieval torture device? Praying to some sort of pain god? Trying to crush people's uh, skull with his size. He's, he's trying to make his size so strong that he could crush people's skulls with them. Hey. Yeah, that's pretty much the only reason I work out. <laughs> oh no, Craig is turning up to speed. I better do the same. Uh, how uh, how long have you been doing the buff thing? Mm -hmm. Couple years. And what do you do when you're not dadding or working or buffing? Oh, oh I cut my twin softball team. That still counts as both dadding and buffing. Mm. Ah, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? I love learning. I try to live my life as close to Jimmy Buffett song <laughs> to a Jimmy Buffett song as possible. I, I check out my hot bod. <laughs> That's confidence, at least. Um, I, I I would say I love learning. I try to educate myself about the world around me. I'm like a sponge for knowledge, soaking up all that intellectual, intel intellectual content. You know, history, the paranormal, wilderness, survival, uh, aliens, mostly those things. So you watch History Channel too, huh? Yes. <laughs> we're jogging now. Oh God, we're jogging now. I look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken his sweat. How is he even doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel my life force draining through every <laughs> orifice of my body. Hey, remember when my fish died in college? <laughs> no, I don't like the story. Oh god, is he really bumping up to speed again? I guess I better do it too. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. And we're, oh, we were at the party, and you vowed to make me feel better. You told me to create a distraction, so I, oh, so of course I do a sick keg stand and get everyone cheering. And then I try to steal the fish from the fish tank at the party with my bare hands like an idiot. And then you drop the fish and it's flopping around and you panic so you run up to me post keg stand with a dying dirty fish in your hands that you scooped off the ground and you're yelling at me that we have to leave. So we're running around the frat party with a fish and trying to give it a mouth to mouth resuscitation and we get him home and get him into a bowl of water but the prognosis was grim and then the next day he's alive and well. They never did catch the great fish thieves of <laughs> Grand Ridge U. <laughs> and they never will. I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Nice. Dude, bro, are you okay? Craig offers me uh, offers me a hand and looks uh, over uh, looks me over for injuries. I'm fantastic. I managed to stand up and rub my back doesn't hurt now but i'm sure it will later oh. you don't have to push yourself like that always know your limits well i think i might call our gym adventure here you sure yeah mm -hmm. all right well here i brought you this craig hands me a shaker bottle full of green uh, thick green liquid i stare at it with uh, what must be an apparent distaste mm -hmm. it's a protein shake bro <laughs> oh thank you he wants me to drink it. Oh boy. Here it goes. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow. This is really good. Bro. And good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Hey. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood if treadmills aren't your speed. No pun intended, bro. Good one. Well, I'm going to put some ice on this everything. I'll see you around. 
I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm, and now he can run circles around me. Literally. Man, I really gotta work on this dad bod. I get home and lie down on the couch. Couch. It hurts to move. Oh god. I'm so old. Doze off, I'm guessing. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at a man of school in five minutes. I practically put on some clean clothes. I applied some generous amount of deodorant and run out the door. Alright. Fuck it. Run, bro. Run. I arrive at my... I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that I'm the only, uh, that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I saw a youth standing in his locker and approached him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Oh, God. It's me. <laughs> oh. Come on, kid. I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy. Are you going to help me or not? <sighs> Fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk you sent me on a wild goose chase. <laughs> I get back to where that low rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucien, don't you have a third period to get to? <sighs> Fine, Mr. Vega. Oh. Wow. Now, I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Hmm. You must be ego. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Hmm? Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Ah. Alright, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Culture in the Rye? Damn, you gonna rip my boy Holden like that? Hmm. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does a thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. The whole class erupts into laughter. Um. Alright, alright everyone. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Oh. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings, although the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. What? Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Uh. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me in size. Oh. <sighs> Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? I don't know. Both. You know, budget cuts. Right. Hmm? Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Please, call me Hugo. Hugo Vega. All right. I don't know. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but... As I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? I don't know. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to sen senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. <sighs> I just want to ask, is everything okay at home? We just moved. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Hmm. See if you could talk to her about it. If she, I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance if she keeps heading down this road. Eh. I know how important our school is to her and I would hate to see her miss out on a scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Ah. Anytime. On my way out, I stopped, thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Oh. Yes? They ever catch that ride? Oh. <laughs> yes. Nice. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life. 
Especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. Maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in, in the passenger seat. So, do you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? <laughs> it was a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Let's make something at home. Cool. I think with our powers combined, we could throw together a gourmet meal worthy of the food channel. I don't know about that, but I can promise you it will at least be edible. That's the spirit. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays the game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay. But also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective. Because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. I love you. Have you been reading my tweets? God damn, what the fuck is going on with your Twitter? You have a Twitter? Huh? What? Never mind. <laughs> God damn it! <clears throat> Look, sweetie. Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Huh. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Huh. It's fine. He's fine. You pulled up to- well, I mean, he is very fine. We pulled up to a, sp a stoplight and I- I- and I- I, Amanda, she's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh-huh. I can tell whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard MR's gonna, going to that f fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you uh, guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. <laughs> Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's a... I don't think you get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Huh. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Huh. Yep. Do you like Noah? Huh? What? No. Dad. Ah. I can't believe you would... Aww. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you... Like, uh, uh, Gross. Sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Huh? Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. Oh, man. Amanda and I get back home and start cooking some dinner. I found this artisanal mac and cheese recipe online that I've been dying to try. Artisanal? There's two ingredients on mac and cheese. Mac and then cheese. Mm. Dad, please try and enjoy the finer things in life. I think you of all people should be able to appreciate what one can do with cheese. Plus, it has bacon on it. I'm in. <laughs> Aren't we as a society collectively over bacon? Mm. Bacon never stopped being good. It just has a PR problem. <laughs> We get to work on the recipe. Amanda measuring things out and handing me, uh, handing them to me to dump into the bowl so I can feel useful. Amanda puts me on baking duty, so I chop a bunch and toss it into the pan and get it, get it sizzling. Huh. The key to a good mac and cheese is the balance of texture, flavor, uh, of texture and flavor, pops. Not only are we gonna want to, not only are we gonna want the fullness of cheese and bacon, but we also need to counterbalance it with a crunchy mouthfeel of bread comes check on bacon mouthfeel check on bacon it's still pink and rubbery i give it uh, the pieces a little stir wait what's a mouthfeel you know when you eat stuff and it the texture uh listen i've been watching a lot of the food channel and i honestly don't know what it means it just makes me feel sophisticated to say no no i get that every time i watch the channel i just feel in order hungry jealous insecure about my cooking <laughs> cooking ability and then hungry again if that ain't a fucking <laughs> mood, bro. I like the mouthfeel of that sentence. Oh my god. Amanda, mouthfeel isn't just about food. It's also about words that are fun to say. Bubbles. <laughs> Gregarious. 
Boisterous. <laughs> Defend the straight. Check on bacon. Boisterous. The killer. Check on bacon. Getting there. Starting to brown up. <laughs> Caddy Wampus. <laughs> Discombobulated. The bacon is sizzling away. It smells good too. I give the sucker a flip. Nice. <laughs> good work, Dad. Bacon can easily overheat heat and cause a grease fire. I'm proud of you for reminding <laughs> from remaining vigilant. We literally just moved in here and I'm dead set on not burning this place down. Eyes like a hawk. Amanda finishes up with the mac and cheese and I toss the bacon bits in there. After stirring it all together, I like I take a taste. How's the mouth feel? Scrumptious, fantastical. Tastes tacular. Scrumptious. Amanda tries a spoonful. Yeah, that's pretty scrumptious. Nice. We settle in on the couch with our bowls of mac and cheese. Oh, cool. Long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers is on. Fucking what? <laughs> Your favorite, right? <laughs> oh, hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but they're also they're hunting ghosts. <laughs> also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint, Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving of and ghost hunting duo find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no, the ghost done got control of the truck. I can't steer them. I can't. Can't? Can't? I can't steer. Uh, I can't steer them. Uh, from, I can't steer them their damn ass roads. Let me just use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, I almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like they're saying you're going to die. Mm. That's because we're about to die, you... This is art. <laughs> this episode ends. <laughs> Amanda excuses herself to go start arguments on the internet. <laughs> God damn it. I stay up a little longer. Curious about the exploits. The exploits. Of Callum and Flint Dogbone. After their disastrous ice road incident, accident. Afterward I crawl into bed. And get a good night's sleep. Alright guys. That's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. And yeah. Uh, day 2 already done. And... I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, hopefully, you know, we start to learn a little bit more about uh, what's going on with Amanda and, you know, her school life and all that. You know, hopefully she's not, you know, in cancel culture for Twitter and all that. <laughs> but yeah, guys, really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what your favorite part of the episode was. Remember to hit that link in the description below to follow me on Twitch. And uh, whenever uh, and be notified whenever I go live. And yeah, till next time, guys. I'll see you later. <laughs>